When people ask me what I believe about the Bible, I usually tell them I believe the Bible is the Word of God for the people of God and that it is authoritative in all matters of faith and practice. In other words, it tells us what to believe and how to behave. Ephesians is a good example of that. Like many of the New Testament letters, there is a section of theology in which the writer is trying to tell those early Christians what to believe, followed by a section of ethical teaching in which the writer is trying to tell those people how to behave. In today's reading from Ephesians, we move from what to believe to how to behave. And I have to warn you, it isn't everybody's favorite part. There really are some of us who would rather sit around drinking coffee and discussing theology than getting up out of our chairs and putting what we know into practice. Nonetheless, here it is, a reading from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. I'll be reading from the New International Version, the same version you have in the Pew Bible. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is, Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For three full chapters now, the writer of Ephesians has been doing theology, telling us what it means to be the church. In chapter 1, he tells us that at just the right time, God sent his Son into the world to gather up from everyone, and not just from among the Jewish people, from every tribe and tongue and nation on earth, one people on whom he could pour out all the blessings of heaven. But a funny thing happens when you try to put people who are very different together. Soon those old, ugly divisions crop up among them, and nobody is getting along with anyone else. That's what happened in the early church, so that in chapter 2, the writer of Ephesians has to remind those people that Christ himself has broken down the dividing wall of hostility that used to exist between them, so that now... Jews and Gentiles, men and women, slaves and free people can come together in the unity of Christian community. In chapter 3, we learn that once that wall was broken down, God picked up the pieces, adopted the members of that diverse community into his own family so that they became children of the Heavenly Father, 
and brothers and sisters to each other. On this Communion Sunday, it seems especially appropriate to think of ourselves as family, all seated around the Lord's table, trying to comprehend with all the saints, as it says there at the end of chapter 3, what is the breadth and length and height and depth of God's love for us. It is a good place to be, but it is a bad place to stay. You ever heard one of those resolutions that begins with the word whereas? As in, whereas we'd like to make this resolution in a very public place, and whereas there may be lots and lots of people present, and whereas we'd like for it to sound just as impressive as possible, therefore be it resolved that we will use the word whereas as often as we can get away with it. If the letter to the Ephesians were a resolution, it might say, Whereas you have received every blessing God has to give, and whereas Christ himself has broken down the dividing wall of hostility between you, and whereas you have been made part of God's own family and taken your place at the Lord's table, Therefore, be it resolved that you no longer have any excuse not to do what God has called you to do. And what God has called you to do is to become what you are. Do you hear that? I hope you can because this writer is talking not only to the saints who are at Ephesus, but also to those saints who are at First Baptist Richmond. Become what you are, he says, and what you are is the church of Jesus Christ. How do we do that? How do we become the church of Jesus Christ? Two things seem clear. If we ever are going to grow up in every way into Christ who is the head of the church, then there must be, one, no more fighting and no more biting, and two, no more this way and no more that way. Let's look at them one at a time. First of all, no more fighting and no more biting. I don't know what was going on at the church in Ephesus, but the amount of ink this writer spills over the issue of unity makes me think the church must have been coming apart at the seams. Maybe all the churches in those days were coming apart at the seams. Maybe they had never been able to successfully resolve that Jew-Gentile dispute. I don't know. Whatever it was, listen to the way our text for today approaches the problem. I urge you to lead a life worthy of the calling you have received, the writer says in verse 1. Be completely humble and gentle which makes me think that probably these people weren't being completely humble and gentle. 